Right now, it's my pleasure to talk with uh, former Rockford West graduate Ernie Kent. He's the new head coach at Washington State University. And, Coach, first of all, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's been a uh, whirlwind week to ten days here, but uh, it's been excellent. Exciting and happy to get back into coaching. You know, when you look at it, it's kind of a perfect situation for you. Uh, 13 years at Oregon, uh, you take a couple of years off, and you're an analyst on the Pac-12 network, so you never lose contact with any of the uh, things going on in the Pac-12. So this kind of works out real well being at Washington State. Well, I, I did have a blueprint in place that if I were to come back, here's what it would look like. And, and the blueprint worked itself all perfectly because you get to work for your old boss who hired you at Oregon, who has a vision that I understand. I have a vision that he understands, and he's very, very supportive of it. You stay in the Pac-12 conference where you started. It was the Pac-8 mm-hmm. as a player, Pac-10 as a coach, now Pac-12 again as a coach. So you understand the conference, uh, the recruiting areas you understand. So it does give you a chance to step away from it, get recharged, refocus, re-energized, and now come back into it with a little bit of a different vision as well, too. You know, when you look at it, uh, doing a little bit of TV work and stuff, did that give you just a good chance, like you said, just to clear your brain a little bit, but you could also see some things that maybe will help you now as you uh, lead the Cougars? No, no question about it. I had a chance to, to take some time off, and I went and spent some time with uh, with Tom Izzo, with Bo Ryan, uh, with Bill Self, uh, Roy Williams, and got around to see their programs as well as different teams in the conference, spend time with coaches. Uh, I did clinics over in Shanghai, China. I did clinics for the Pac-12 officials. I did clinics for seven other conferences in year two for, for all of their officials. So you had a chance to really kind of broaden your horizons while you take a deep breath, but yet, yet stay connected to the game. So it is kind of the best of both worlds. And I also saw you just added two assistants that are very familiar to you, and that's got to make you feel like you're right at home right now. You know, having been out of coaching, uh, which, which will be actually for almost four years, I just felt like you needed to bring in guys that understood what it takes to be successful. They could just drop them down in Pullman, and away they go, and it's almost as if they've been in Pullman for the last five years. That's how organized they are and how organized we are as a staff. Uh, Greg Graham played with me at Oregon, helped me build St. Mary's, helped me build the University of Oregon uh, into one of the lead programs in the country. Uh, Sylvie Dominguez, who, who just comes out of the Air Force Academy, also was with us at St. Mary's when we built that program. He helped Henry Bibby build the USC program that was a Sweet 16 team, and then it's coming out of the Air Force. Now both of those gentlemen have their master's degree, so you have the academic component that I think student-athletes need to be around, successful for people, successful people, educated people. That way you can preach and teach at the same time the importance of academics as well as winning basketball. Yeah, I noticed that that is a key for you, that uh, academics is a must. So does that kind of, with this one-and-done stuff that's going on, all the talk with, like, Kentucky and stuff, does that have a lot to do with where you want your kids to get in school, get their education, and then go on to life? I marvel at John Calipari in, in Kentucky and what he's been able to do. Because to, for young people, uh, to give themselves up for the name on the front of the uniform and play that well together at age 17, 18, 19. That's incredible to me. You just don't see that in this day and age in the corporate world where you have self-entitlement and they want to make it about them for young people to be able to do that. So that number that people talk about one and done, it's not a great number at all. It's a very small number, small percentage. So I'm all for anybody having an opportunity uh, to, to feed themselves, feed their family. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just that it's blown so off perception in terms of what a real perspective in terms of what it really is. So I think you got to look at it from the other side. How does it continue to get those young kids mm-hmm. to play that well on center stage of all that pressure, and now they're in a position to win another national championship? It's just amazing to me. You know, when you look at your team for next year, uh, I know the recruiting, you're probably a little bit behind with the pre- recruiting. Everybody's been out doing that already, and you've got some kids that will be coming back next year. How are things looking with your players so far, Coach? You know, this team did not do well the last couple of years, so they've got a major uh, rebuilding task just in terms of their mental perception of who they are and where they want to go and what they're able to accomplish. So the biggest, I think, building block is the mental part of it, the confidence, the understanding, uh, the perception that they have of themselves and other people have of them. If we can get that part of it straightened out, the recruiting down the road next year and all that will take care of itself. But right now the focus is on this team, their mental makeup of who they think they are 
and getting them to a point where they have an opportunity to be successful. How much has the recruiting changed since you first started coaching back those many years ago to now? It seems like it's very, very competitive. You've got to be on the road a lot for that stuff. Well, it, it is competitive, but re- the recruiting more so now uh, is about relationships. Uh, and it's just relationships with, with young people, with their parents, uh, with other people that are in their corner that are involved, involved with the recruiting process. It, it's about trust. It's about selling reality. Uh, doing what you say what you're going to do and doing what you present in that living room, what you're going to do. So you need to have a complete understanding uh, of how all of this works. You cannot go in maybe like it was in the old days and sell a bunch of hype and think you're going to be mm-hmm. successful recruiting. You need to go in there selling the right things for the right reasons. And I always equate it to I was no way I was going to let my own son or daughter fail. And if I sit in that living room and I'm in front of a parent and I'm talking about give me your son, and I like to kick down. I'm a fisherman of men. Mm-hmm. There's no way I'm going to let your son fail. And that's the key thing in all this, the reality of what you're doing, who you're dealing with, what you're promising, and then following through on it. You know, uh, you went to Rockford West. Unfortunately, that school's not open anymore. But how did Rockford get you ready for all this, the process? I think Rockford is one of those areas that has um, uh, a tremendously – a large amount of gifted athletes when I went to school, football players, track stars, basketball players, they were everywhere. And you could literally travel to several different areas in Rockford and get as competitive a game as you wanted to in the game of basketball. So what it taught you was how to compete and how to be successful at an early age. The competitiveness of its level, uh, even from a player's perspective to a coaching perspective, it's what separates, I think, those that are successful. You have to be driven. You have to understand the grind, and you have to want to be successful. That's the competitive that your Rockford gave you in terms of wanting to be the best in that city with all of those great athletes and great basketball players back there. And you have to be proud of a Fred Van Fleet. He went to Auburn, and now he's at Wichita State. And you got to puff that chest out a little bit that none of the Rockford guy is doing so well at the major basketball level. I am extremely proud of him and how poised he played, how smart he played, and the fact that he was a contributor in a program that's been one of the elite programs in the country the last couple of years. I would even be prouder if the next Fred Blanchett came out was a Cougar. Yeah. So I'm hoping I'll get the opportunity to come back there and recruit the next one. That's great. And how, how big was it for you to be named to the Rockford Schools Hall of Fame? I know that everybody is just really proud of you, and when you were in town, that's all I heard about. And Ernie Kenton was in town, and that's got to make you feel good, too. Well, I think to have the opportunity to stay connected uh, to a place that you call home is very important. And I've been back several times on, on several different occasions to do different things. But to come back and be recognized again uh, in a city that had such success athletically, and I don't think people understand the history and, and that goes along with all that success that was that taking place in Rockford. And to be honored and be a part of that uh, was really, really special and something I'll never forget. Before I let you go real quick, right now the National Federation of High Schools is looking at going to a shot clock and also to 18-minute halves. Would that it help you out as a coach to have them do that where they have a shot clock to work with when they're in high school and the halves? What do you think about that, Coach? Well, I, I think the shot clock definitely will because it will get to understand how to speed the game up. Uh, I know coaches like to coach and dictate and do all those things and control tempo and control the clock and that, but when you talk about in today's economy and trying to get the dollar to come see your product it needs to be an exciting product and with the shot clock it'll speed the game up uh the 18 and a half will probably give them an opportunity to play faster and harder because the games are not as long but but i think it'll definitely enhance the game of basketball and actually it may create more opportunities for athletes to be recruited having an opportunity to play that style and that length of time that we play at our level Well, thanks so much, Coach, for taking time out, and you know that we're going to be rooting for you back here in the Forest City in Rockford. And uh, once again, congratulations on the Hall of Fame and the new job at Washington State. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. We've been talking to Ernie Kent from Rockford West. He's a graduate and the new basketball coach at Washington State University. For StatelineSportsHub.com, I'm Dave Schmidt.